Eva Marie Saint. spent on my lessons. I, uh, it's very exciting for me to be in this beautiful bowl as I stand here looking at you. I remember the many times my husband and family have been right where you are looking at the stage and being on the stage now and looking at you and your beautiful faces. I still can see them in the dark and the fact that you're having, I hope, a wonderful time this Sunday evening and that you plan to spend it with us at the bowl. Thank you. Boy, Alfred Hitchcock, that was so scary what I just saw. I was relaxed until that. Now, about Alfred Hitchcock, whom I adored and respected. He was that rare director who appealed to both film critics and the larger public. This evening is for those who want to experience Hitchcock from a unique point of view, to focus on the sound as much as the sight. We'll be looking and listening to excerpts from 12 Hitchcock films spanning 33 years of his long and distinguished career. You see, music played a critical role in many of those films. It was part of the narrative and ingrained in the fabric of the film. And it's hard to think about films like Vertigo and Psycho without hearing those scores in your head. <laughs> he believed that music was like an alternate language that could express his character's unconscious longing and tell stories that pictures alone could not. He said music could express the unspoken and he provided all of his composers with detailed notes on precisely what music should accomplish. He was also known for his meticulous storyboarding of each scene and was a perfectionist obsessed with details. I can attest to that. Not satisfied with the wardrobe made for me at MGM for North by Northwest, he flew me to New York and sat down with me at Bergdorf Goodman and he watched the models walk by, and we consulted over each and every dress. A model walked by with a black dress with red roses embossed, and I whispered, oh, Hitch, I like that dress. <laughs> and he said, wrap it up for Miss Saint. <laughs> After that, I called him my sugar daddy. <laughs> His movies have a powerful, dreamlike aura. In many ways, it was the music in his films that supplied both terror and romanticism, which leads me to the first of our films tonight. Strangers on a Train was the first of four that hitched in with Russian-born composer Dmitry Tiomkin. Tiomkin scored more than a hundred films, including such classics as High Noon, and the high and the mighty. The two main characters in Strangers on a Train are a tennis pro, played by Farley Granger, and a most straight, charming villain, played by Robert Walker. Also in a small role in Hitchcock's film was his daughter, Pat. By the way, Pat was wonderful in the film, and it broke her father's heart that she didn't pursue an acting career. After that, I once asked her what kind of father was Alfred Hitchcock. And she said, he was like any other normal father. For instance, he would come into my bedroom at night, and when I was asleep, he'd quietly paint my face without waking me up. <laughs> and when I woke up in the morning and looked in the mirror, I had a funny painted face. <laughs> Well, I had to ask Pat, you call that a normal father? She said, of course. 
The title music in our first clip introduces the main theme along with sinister sounds associated with Robert Walker and a swooning violin for Farley Granger. From beginning to end, Tiankin sounds the movie's theme of crisscross, the term used by Walker. The film's opening two sets of striding male shoes moving toward a train shows a crisscrossing of two worlds. So, here are the conductor David Newman and the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra with music from Strangers on a Train. <laughs> 